The objective of the game is to destroy the snipes. Huh, why won't this start? Anyway, oh, sorry. Uh, hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. So today, we're gonna have a look at installing IBM iClass 1.30 on top of Novell Netware 3.12. And I'm kind of busy right now. I'm trying to figure out why this network game for color monitor with snipes isn't working. I keep on getting into it and pressing the any key and it takes me right back to the main menu here. I don't know what's going on. So while I try to figure this out, I'm gonna send you over to Virtual Chris and he's gonna take you through the procedure. So take it away, Virtual Chris. Okay, installing Netware 3.12 and IBM Classroom LAN Administration 1.30. Let's get started. First of all, as always, the directions you see here are available in my Git repository so that you can follow along and set up accordingly. I will put a link in the video description to these directions as I always do. Okay, so first of all, I wanted to give a shout out to some of the different references I've used to put this procedure together, and you can see those listed here. Before we begin, let's talk about the items to locate. First of all, you'll need to locate a licensed copy of Novell Netware 3.12, and you will also need to ensure that your copy of Novell Netware has Netware Management as well as Basic MHS. Additionally, we will be using four patches for this installation and you can see those listed here. Next, you'll need to locate your licensed copy of IBM Classroom LAN Administration System. This procedure was tested with version 1.30. If you do use version 1.30, you're also going to need a patched copy of disk four, which fixes a bug with the class class program. And that bug has to do with adding and removing classrooms. If you are a licensed user of the product, you can find an archival version on Vetusware that happens to be there. And I did have a look at it and it does match up with what I would expect. So there's that. And finally, as far as licensed software is concerned, you will need a copy of PCDOS 6.3. In addition to licensed software, there are a variety of drivers you will need, including the AMD PCNet Netware 3.12 server drivers. And what you'll want to do is download them and unzip them to a folder as indicated here. Also the Netware idle driver, which is very helpful if running in a virtual machine. Also the AMD PCNet network card client drivers. And once again, go ahead and download and unzip this. Also the AMD PCNet Client32 drivers. Once again, go ahead and unzip this once downloaded. And the reason we need this is for a good version of lsl.com that we'll be using on the client side. Otherwise, we actually won't be using these drivers for anything. We just need that one file out of there. And also you're going to need the Zircom PE3 drivers and you may be asking, why is that the case when the virtual machine does not have a Zircom Pocket Ethernet 3 adapter? Well, I actually download this so that I can get a copy of NetX and IPX ODI for use with the Novell client. So that's just a convenient way to get a copy of these files. All right. In addition to the drivers and the licensed software, you will also need to download and install Oracle VM VirtualBox. I suggest version 6.0.18 or lower, as well as downloading WinImage. And also you need a MS-DOS 6.22 boot disk. If you are licensed to use the program, there is an ISO here that you can download as well. So next we have installations. What you're going to want to do if you haven't already is install Oracle VM VirtualBox as well as WinImage. Since I've already installed those, I won't be covering that today, but those are definitely going to be prerequisites to the rest of the setup. And with that, let's move on to server setup. And the first thing we're going to do is create a VirtualBox VM for the server itself. Let me drag this over here. We're just going to name this Novell server, and it's going to be of type other. 
and version will automatically populate with DOS. I think that's the first item in the list. So there you go. Click next. 32 megabytes of memory is absolutely perfect. Next, we'll create a virtual hard disk. It's going to be of type VMDK. That will make it easy to use WinImage to inject files into this image, which we will be doing here before too long. As for storage, dynamically allocated is fine. And we're going to want to make this two gigabytes. You can just type two GB in the box there and that will take care of it and then click create. Perfect. So with this virtual machine created, we can go to settings and we're going to change some network settings. Namely, the network adapter needs to be bridged and we're going to bridge it to, in my case, a wireless card. Since everything I'll be doing today is virtual, if you're wanting to bridge to a real computer, you may want to change this to use a wired card, but in my case, we're going to use wireless. If you decide to change it later, that's perfectly fine as well. So for now, since I'm going to be virtual, I'll make this wireless and we'll just click OK. Let's go ahead and scroll up in the directions a little bit. The next thing we're going to do is actually start the VM. And we're prompted to put in a startup disk. I will go ahead and put that DOS 622 bootable ISO into the drive and click start. And let me make this a little bit bigger so we can actually, you know, see it. <laughs> the windows always come up small. There we are. And it's a little bit more here. Perfect. Okay. So with this booted, we're now going to set up a partition. To do that, I'm going to type fdisk. And we will create a partition, so one. It'll be primary, so one. Now, usually we answer Y here. We're going to answer N because we want to save some space for the netware partition. As such, we're going to make a smaller 500 megabyte DOS partition. Perfect. We can now press escape and you'll notice the warning this partition was not made active since we kind of broke the rules and didn't just accept the defaults. So hit two and then select one. And now that partition will be active. Perfect. With this, we can press escape twice and we'll be prompted to reboot. After we reboot, we can format drive C and do a slash S to install the system boot files. And with that, we're all set to boot up this virtual machine without the CD-ROM. So I'm going to go ahead and eject that CD-ROM. And from there, we can go ahead and reboot the virtual machine. And from here, we're ready for the next step to install NetWare. So let's go ahead and put the NetWare disk into drive A. And this is going to be the installation disk. And we can go A colon and type install. Press any key to continue. We're going to install a new NetWare 3.12, so we'll press enter here. Enter to retain the current disk partitions. As for the server name, I'm going to call it iClass Demo and press enter. Internal network number is going to be a complete random series of numbers and letters. It's perfectly fine. What is chosen here, just press enter. And then we'll press enter here to acknowledge the boot files location. And we finally get to insert another disk, which will be system one. Followed quickly by system two. and then followed by the Unicode disk. And for this, we have a couple of options and choices to make. We get to choose the country code, code page, and keyboard mapping. So we'll press F10. And sorry that this window keeps shifting. Okay, so here we're going to choose DOS file name format, so we'll press Enter. 
and we do not wish to specify any special startup commands for set, but we do want to modify auto exec bat to load server.exe. And we'll press enter to give the default path for auto exec.bat. Great. Whoa, what happened? <laughs> What's this? Well, welcome to the Netware console. Let's have some fun. So the first thing we need to do is actually load a device driver for our disks. So if we type load ISA disk, that will load an ISA device driver. IO port 1FO is fine. That's your primary IDE port. And the interrupt E is fine, so enter. Next, we need to run the installer. So I'm going to type load install and we get this nice Netware server installation screen. And you can see this is actually a loadable module. So we're running a module here to run the installer. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is choose disk options and then partition tables. And we're going to create a Netware partition. And this is extremely intuitive, but the next thing you do is press the escape key, right? And then choose yes to create the partition. Excellent. Congratulations, we now have a network partition and I'll scroll down in the directions so that we can follow along because this is not even completely intuitive to me. So we'll go ahead and press escape and then press escape again and go to volume options. And we're now going to press the insert key and choose a volume name of sys and it will take the whole volume size of 15, 16 megabytes, so that's fine. Press once again You've got it, escape, and then yes to create the volume. Perfect. We're now going to hit escape and go to system options and copy system and public files. And of course the volume sys needs to be mounted first, so press escape to continue, and then yes to mount volume sys. At this point we can start to pop the installation disks into the drive and we'll start with the install disk once again. So we can put that in and press enter. And you can see there I sped up the process because I really like my viewing audience and don't like to put them to sleep. In any event, we went all the way through the rest of the system disks until we got to system eight and now we're all set. Okay, so now we can press escape to continue, of course. <laughs> and we can follow the directions, and I apologize that this window keeps uncentering itself. But what we're going to do next is go ahead and create an autoexec.ncf file. And it's picked up a couple of things from the environment, but we also wanna add this line here, which is going to be required for our iClass installation. So set allow unencrypted passwords equals on. Hit escape and then yes, perfect. We're also going to want to create a startup.ncf file. And it'll ask us for a path, that's fine. And it will have a default there. This is the command we typed earlier. So that's great. Hit escape and then Y to save, perfect. From here, we're going to return back to the main menu and then go to product options, hit the insert key and we're going to put the Netware Management Agent 1 disk into the drive. You'll notice it gets detected, so we can say install on this server. We'll be prompted for disk 2. Press enter. Actually, escape. And from there, we can see installation is complete. We're going to add one other product, so I'm going to hit insert again, and we're going to put into the floppy drive the basic MHS disk. We'll press enter here, and it's going to ask us a series of questions of which we are going to answer yes, all right, now it's time to put in disk two. Press any key. Yes, 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 and we're all set.
perfect. So now we have the basic MHS and the manager installed. Great. At this point, we're going to want to go ahead and exit the utility and shut down the server by typing down and then exit. And at this point, you may get a complaint. That's okay. Go ahead and just power off the virtual machine. Next up, it's time to perform some injections. And I promise it won't be as painful as it sounds. But the first thing we're going to want to do is launch WinImage. And from there, we need to navigate to the location of the VMDK folder for our server. I happen to be here already. It's under my CML VirtualBox VMs Novell server directory. And we can put a file filter in here for VMDK. And there it is. So I'll click on that and then open and OK. And the first thing we're going to do is inject this ODI AHSM SVR3X file or the unzipped version of it and say that three times fast into a folder called LAN. So let's create a folder, call it LAN. Let's click on it. Then let's go image, inject a folder. We can go to our downloads directory. That's where I happen to have things and look for this folder, which I'm not gonna say the name again, but it begins with ODI. You can see it here. Click okay. And then yes to inject. Great. Next, we're going to inject the 312 PTD patch into the image. So let's go ahead and make a folder for it just to keep things nice and tidy. We'll call it 312 PTD. We'll click on it. Image. This time it's going to be just inject. And then we can navigate to that as well. Perfect. Next up is ODI 33G. So let's follow the pattern. Create a folder, ODI 33G, select it, image, inject, there it is, all right. And next we're going to inject the NW4 idle concept. So let's go ahead and create a folder for that. We'll select it, inject just a file. And we can go up a level for that or two. And there it is. Yes. And finally, let's inject the Y2K patch. So let's create a folder. Call it 312Y2K P2. Click on that. Image, inject, and back to the patches directory. I guess I could have done this in a smarter order, huh? Anyway, I digress. And we will find it and inject it. Great. All of our injections are complete. So with this, we can close WinImage and exit WinImage, I guess I should say. And then we can go ahead and start up the virtual machine once again. And it looks like I forgot to eject the last disk we installed. So let me go ahead and do that at this point. You can see that we boot right into NetWare. If we press the Alt Escape key, that'll bring us back to the command prompt since we were in that mail handling server program. And the next thing we're going to do is actually shut down the server with a down command and then exit. Let's go ahead and apply that 312 update patch. So we can do CD 312 PTD and then type 312 PTD and hit Y to extract. We can then restart the server by changing to the server.312 directory and typing server. And once again, once we get into this basic MHS, we need to hit Alt Escape to come back to the command prompt for NetWare. And we can load the patch by typing load C colon slash 312 PTD slash 312 PTD slash patch 312. 
So we're going to want to copy the patches to the server and enter a location, which is going to be C colon slash 312 PTD slash 312 PTD enter. You'll see the patches copy over. We can press enter to continue, then escape, and then Y. From there, we can type down and then exit and get ready to apply our next patch. So the next patch we're going to apply is the Y2K patch at least on the server side. So to do that, we can do cd backslash 312y2kp2, type in 312y2kp2, y to extract. And this is a more manual patch, so we get to specify some exact commands. I'm going to copy the boot star dot star to server 3.12 and say y to overwrite the file, perfect. We will then change into the server 3.12 directory. And now that we're CD'd into the directory, we will type the following. lswap c colon backslash server.312 slash loader exe. Well, no extra slash, you get the idea. c colon slash server 312 slash server exe. And this is basically swapping two files. Great. That patch is now applied on the server side. I think we'll see it again on the client side, but that's good for now. Okay, so the next patch we're going to apply is this ODI driver update. So for that, we're going to cd backslash ODI 33G, type ODI 33G, Y to extract. And similarly, this is a very manual process, but we get to copy a couple of files, which I always misspell. Except for this time, <laughs> you can read along and see that we have basically three files to copy. One more. Perfect. So we've copied those three files from the patch. Great. The next thing we're going to do is copy over the LAN and Netware idle drivers. So we can go to the LAN directory and copy everything PCNT and W star dot star to C colon backslash server dot 312. And similarly, we're going to do the same for the NW4 idle. So we'll CD into that directory and copy everything to C colon backslash server dot 312. So basically copying some drivers and some netware loadable modules over to the netware directory. With this, we're ready to start the server again. So we'll change into the server directory and type server. And from here we can hit alt escape. And let's scroll down in the directions again since we've kind of moved through them. And let's go ahead and load our LAN drivers. So that's going to be a load. C colon backslash server dot 312 PC NTNW dot LAN. And we're going to be prompted and some options will be presented to us. So notice the slot is slot two, enter. Let's make a note of that. And also let's make a note of the port and interrupt. So the slot was two, the interrupt was nine, and the port was D020. You notice that I have these noted over here. It'll probably be the same for you, but in any event, that's something we're going to need for the next step because we're going to set this so that it will load on system startup. So to do that, we type load edit sys colon backslash system slash auto exec dot ncf. We've seen this file before. It now has some more things in it. As you recall earlier, we added this set allow unencrypted passwords on. So that's in there. And before the network basics MHS line, so here I'm gonna press enter a couple of times we're going to add the following commands. Load c colon backslash server dot 312 PC NTNW, that's our driver. Slot equals the slot from before that we recorded. In our case, it was two. Port equals the port we recorded, D020. Int equals nine in our case. So there's the first line. Next. We need to set a bind line, so bind IPX to PC NTNW. 
net equals ed001. That's just an arbitrary name we've chosen. And we're also going to load that idle driver to cut down on CPU usage in our virtual machine. So let's go ahead and add a line for that. Great. So driver loaded, driver bound, and then loading this other NW4 idle driver. Excellent. So we're going to hit escape, then yes. And then we can type down and exit. And then server to load the server right away. We can see the network card loading. Let's do an alt escape and let's check our work. To do that, we can load the monitor by typing load monitor and then go to LAN information and press enter. And you will see that we have a node address, which is very similar to the MAC address, actually is the MAC address of our virtual card, as well as a network address. So I'm gonna call that success. It looks like we're all set there. If for some reason you don't see a node address, you probably have a problem with your configuration, but you can see that we do have that here and the protocol IPX is also present. So this is excellent news and our server is all configured. I'm gonna hit escape a couple of times and then Y to exit and we're back at the console. And once again, I know I breezed past that, but to load that monitor, it was load monitor. And that's how we were able to get into that. Great. Well, with this, our server is all configured. Now we can move on to configuring the client. Okay, so setting up the client. First of all, let's go ahead and minimize this server. We're not going to need it for the time being. In VirtualBox, we can create a new virtual machine, which we will call Novell Client. And it will be of type other. Next. 16 megabytes should be plenty for this. So we'll change that and hit next. Let's create a virtual hard disk once again of type VMDK. Dynamically allocated is fine. And these defaults are fine as well. So we'll just click create. Now let's go ahead and set up our network adapter. So with the client selected, I'm going to go to settings, network, and you're going to want to match whatever setting you had before. So a bridged adapter, in my case, wireless. So once again, make sure you match things here so that the client and server can see each other. So with this, we're ready to install PC DOS. Let's click on settings again, go to storage, choose the floppy drive, and let's navigate over to our PC DOS installation disks and choose disk one, and then okay. From there, we can hit start to start the VM. We'll want to allocate all free hard disk space and press enter. Then format the partition, press enter. Then enter to start installation. Enter to select settings. Enter to confirm the options above. And when finished playing disk roulette, it will be time to restart. So go ahead and remove any disks and you can press the any key to restart the virtual machine. And look at that, we boot right into IBM DOS shell. Very nice. Let's go ahead and choose file and exit to get out of there, or you could press Alt F4 alternatively. And now we get the privilege of using DOS Edlin. So type DOS Edlin autoexec.bat, and it's going to basically say end of input file. If we type 6D, we're going to delete that DOS shell launcher. Now, if we were to hit L, for example, you can see a listing of the file and it ends with the mouse.com. The last line of the file was line six and it is now gone. We can press E to exit Edlin. And at this point, we're going to want to power down the virtual machine. So now we have the opportunity to once again do some injections, this time for the client side. So let's go ahead and fire up the trusty win image.
And let's open our VMDK file for the client. So we'll go file open. And since WinImage remembered where we were last, we can just go up one directory and then go to the client and do a VMDK search here in the file name. There it is. Excellent. So let's go ahead and do some injections. First, we're going to need the PCNTNW driver. So let's go ahead and create a folder. We'll call this folder net, change into it. And then we're gonna go image, inject, and we're gonna to navigate to our drivers, which are gonna be located under LAN, Netware, DOS, and then PCNTNW, and then yes to inject. And all of that is outlined here. <laughs> Maybe that would have been helpful to highlight, I apologize. Anyway, so next up we need lsl.com, which we're also going to put into this net directory. So let's go image, inject. We're gonna to go to the client32 directory and look for lsl.com. Select it, open, yes to inject. Next, we're going to inject the PE3 driver. So we'll say image, create folder, PE3 DRV. Select that folder, image, inject, and let's find it. There it is, and yes. Next, we get to inject a few patches. So let's go ahead and create a folder for the first patch, which is going to be the Y2K patch on the client side. So 312Y2K P2, image, inject, and let's find that. Yes. And finally, the lib312c driver. So image, create folder, lib312c. And let's go and locate that. Great. So with all of these items injected here, we can go ahead and close when image and restart the client. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our IPX, ODI, and NetX drivers. Let's change into the PE3 DRV folder and type PE3 DRV. And you're gonna be asked to extract 100 times, just keep hitting yes. Okay, not 100, I exaggerate, but more than two. Once done, we can say copy ODI slash ipxodi.com to c colon backslash net. We're basically collecting up all the files we need to start up the uh, network client. So now we can also do the same for netx. So copy ODI netx.exe to c colon backslash net. Great. And now we can do some configuration of the client. Now, this time we're gonna use a different editor, the e-editor, and we'll edit autoexec.bat. And we're going to add a few lines here. And we wanna add these at the bottom of the file. First, we need to set a path statement to find our net directory. Then LSL. PCNTNW, IPX, ODI, NetX, and then F colon to change to drive F. We can do an F2 to save and an F3 to exit. Now when we reboot, we should be all logged in, or at least NetX should be completed and we should be able to log in. Let's type login supervisor. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and apply some patches so let's go back to drive C and change into the lib312c folder and type lib312c. Continue extraction, yes. Great. Now we're going to change some permissions on some files. So we're gonna say flag x colon backslash system 
backslash star.nlm to the end permission. C to continue. Great. Now let's copy all of our NLM files that we're going to patch to x colon backslash system and A to overwrite everything. I'm going to also copy message files to the x colon backslash system. Great. We also need to flag those. I'm here. <laughs> Sorry. So let's say flag x colon system NLM ROSH. So that'll make them read only and share. Let's try that again. So we need to flag x colon backslash system and LM R O S H. Press any key to continue. Excellent. So we're all set there. Next up, we can apply the Y2K patch. So we'll go C colon backslash 312 Y2K P2. And we can type 312 Y2K P2. Y to extract. We'll once again flag the directory as well as the public directory. All right. And we also need to copy sys public to x drive public. Now we can say copy sys system from our patch to x colon backslash system and a to overwrite all. So now we can flag x colon system as read only and sh. And we will do the same for public. Great. We should be all set with that patch. Next up, let's launch our Novell server and restart it. So to do that, we can say down and exit. And then server. Great. And then we'll do an auto escape to get back to the main console. Perfect. And now it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's install iClass. We do that on the server side, right? Well, actually, no. We do this on the client side. So let's go ahead and come back over to our client. And we can see it's a little bit angry <laughs> since we rebooted the server in the midst of doing some things here. That's OK. Let's go ahead and just reboot the client for good measure. Great. So first, let's log in as supervisor. Super secure, no password. It's OK. And now let's put disk one of iClass into drive A. And once again, I'm using iClass 1.3 with the patched disk four. All right. So follow the directions exactly as written. Do not change directories. A colon G. That's what you want to type. Press any key to continue. We're going to skip this part for now, so press escape. Now, at this point, the installation will freeze. Hold down the space bar. OK, eventually you'll be confronted with disk two. So what's happening is in the background, the flag command is getting called, and it's pausing. So you'll have to hold down the space bar as you cycle through the disks or I should say, as you cycle through the installation. All right, let's put disk two in. Once again, I'm holding down the space bar. <laughs> All right, now we've made it to disk three. Now disk four. And you'll be prompted with this with disk four. Press any key. And from here, we can just press N. Perfect. Spacebar again. And disk five. Let's 
spacebar again. And eventually you'll get to this screen where we can reboot. Perfect. And actually, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and reboot the server. So let's do that. With a down and an exit. And then server. Great. We can minimize that. And let's go ahead and log in as supervisor on the client. And from there, let's go to drive X and make a directory called, or go into the DOS directory and make a directory called v6.00 and change into it and copy all of C colon backslash DOS to it. Great. Next, we get to update auto exec bat. And we're going to add a couple of lines here. First, let's add this set v equals c colon, followed by g, then an f2 to save, and an f3 to exit, and reboot the client. Hey, what a familiar looking screen. Let's go ahead and log in as sysop. And we're in. Excellent. At this point, you can proceed to install files, and I refer you to my other video where I did a tour of how to interact with iClass. But at this point, iClass is installed. Thank you, Virgil Chris. Appreciate that. That's the procedure. And as noted, we'll certainly put a link down below so that you can access the procedure for yourself. Give it a try. Let me know how it goes in the comments or if you have any trouble and I'll do my best to assist you to get past it. Definitely subscribe to the channel. There's more content on the way. Ring that notification bell and you'll be notified when that's released. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If not, you know what to do. Anyway, in the meantime, until I see you next time, I'll be sitting here trying to figure out how to get this network game for color monitor going. I just don't seem to be having a whole lot of luck and it keeps on kicking me back and I'm not allowed to go on that snipe hunt. So I guess that's all for now and we'll see you next time. Bye.